Hello reformers and welcome back to Viking Conquest. Now, when we left off we had just competed in a tournament and actually done pretty well. And apparently, according to some of you, this cow is extremely good. And now I was making a little bit of fun of it in the previous episode because obviously this is new to me. This is a, a bit of a new item and apparently it is really very good because it produces milk as far as I'm aware. So that's going to be really useful. Now, if we can, what I would love to do is join this competition. Now, I know I said, oh, you know, I don't really want to do another one, but you never know when you need that additional little bit of cash. And it might be quite fun just to start off an episode with it instead of ending it with one. So let's, let's try it out. Who knows? Maybe I'll be able to do a reasonable job here. And I've actually figured out that I am really bad at using the spear when I have a shield equipped. So what I'm going to try and do is use it two-handed, but I need to be very, very careful of, you know, potential throne weapons, because throne weapons can make a huge difference to the amount of damage you take. Especially when you don't have... ow. Yes. Especially when you don't have a shield. So, you know, throne weapons, uh, you know, want to be a little bit careful about that. Now, have we eliminated all of them? No, we haven't. Come, come, sphere warrior. You must help me. You must help me to achieve victory in this endeavor. I'm a bit worried about it. Ooh, nice. 44 damage? That was insane. All right, let's try it. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. Okay, a little bit more. Ooh, nice. Okay, we're getting pretty, pretty good, if I do say so myself, at using spears without the shield, obviously. Without the shield, yeah, we're, we're okay at using it. Four teams with five fighters each. I'm actually going to allow my people to... Do uh, this is not good. This is not good at all. All right, well, I guess I'm just going to have to move my people into position, and hopefully I'll be able to maybe tell them to now charge in. Yes. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a problem, because I have a feeling... Okay. I have a feeling that we might be in a bit of trouble, actually. Yeah, yes. Yeah, no, 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 yes. Nice damage. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was bad. That was really bad. We should have, we really should have gone over to the blue team, shouldn't we? Yes, we should have attacked the blue team immediately. Oh, well, never mind. At least we got eliminated in one of the first rounds, so it's not really a big deal. Now, what I'd like to do is I would like to go over here to this Danish long fort, because one of you did mention that maybe it's a place where I can get a ship. I don't know whether that's the case. I personally don't think so, but you never know. Maybe they've changed something from last time. I personally feel like this is probably... Oh, my. Wow. Wow. You know, I was asking in the last episode, I was just like, hmm, I'd love to see some bigger bandit parties. And, oh, what, what, what have they done? Yes, they've given me bigger bandit parties. Isn't that hilarious? Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to basically just take, well, all of, all of the people, all of the people out of here. And I'm going to try and defeat this Danish elite Viking band with 73 units okay <laughs> 73 units does seem like quite a lot but when you think about it it's probably not going to be enough to deal with this many elite units i don't know i don't know really but we're going to try it out anyway because if we're able to succeed in this particular endeavor we will have the greatest opportunity for wonderful loot like really good loot and i'm talking extremely heavy armor, wonderful helmets, maybe some really, really good axes, and maybe swords as well. I wouldn't actually mind having a sword instead of an axe, but the axe is actually pretty good at destroying enemy shields, and sometimes you need to get through shields pretty fast, so being able to destroy them is, you know, uh, a decent idea. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try and put my people on the hill because most of our units are skirmishers, hilariously enough. Yeah. You can tell that I'm not very happy about that. But we're going to try. Going to try our best anyway. Going to put my infantry and spearmen at the front here because, well, obviously they are the ones... Oh my. This might not actually work out too well because I've now told everyone to stand closer. And them, them standing closer is maybe not the best idea, is it? 
Okay, come on. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. I'm trying to. I'm trying to faint a little bit here. Well, not faint, but you know, I'm trying to wind up my attack so that when they attack, I'm able to attack before they attack. Ah, oh, yes. Convoluted sentence. Convoluted sentence. Yes. Okay, so let's try and see if we can. Yeah, maybe just attack from behind a little bit. You know how Borgar likes to attack from behind. All my characters do. You know. <laughs> Uh, of course, I'm joking. It does do a lot more damage, though, in uh, in this, you know, in this, uh, what, what is it now? In this DLC, that's it. Yes, in this DLC. Ah, if I could actually think about it and remember correctly, then that would be fantastic. Okay, doesn't seem like I'm able to hit any of those with my thrown weapons. The rest of them are running, so that's absolutely fine. There you go, we achieved victory with very minor losses. I should really be, I don't know, I think I'm giving the farmers and the peasant women too little credit. You know, I think they're actually a lot better than they let on. And it's kind of like, you know, when you're watching a TV show or a movie or whatever, and you think to yourself, oh, that, uh, I don't know, that person over there who is down on his luck or down on her luck or whatever, you know, they seem not very powerful at all. And then it turns out that in the end, they're the most powerful in the entire movie or TV show or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. I, I, I kind of feel like that is exactly what is going on with the farmers at the moment. Anyway, let's see, what do we have here? This axe is pretty good. Gonna be using the axe. I don't really care for the hand axe too much and the shields can just be sold. That's absolutely fine. There we go. All right. Sometimes I'm troubled by all this bloodshed, but I know that proud warlords must be humbled and cruel bandits tamed if we are to restore peace. Okay, so he and obviously Beta, they are getting along quite well. Which I, um, eh, I don't really mind whether they get on or not, but uh, yes, yeah, as I said in the previous episode, we're going to need to restructure our companions quite a bit. Oh yeah, and uh, apparently what I need to do to disable companion complaints is go into the cheat menu. So I, I didn't really want to have to do that. So I'm probably just going to do it the old-fashioned way and just find companions that get on with each other. I think that should probably make a good difference. So let's head into the Danish... Ah, uh, okay, yes. It is actually a hideout. So I'm going to leave that up there just because it's a nice source of bandits. And look at that. The cow's milk has been made into butter. That is fantastic. That is really, really cool. All right, so we're now here at this monastery because I thought it might be a nice idea considering we have a pretty decent surplus of money to learn how to read because obviously we can't do that right now. Otherwise, I'd also like to make a donation to the monastery. I think this is a Christian monastery, so hopefully that's going to be the case because then that we have a bit of a synergy between our current religion and so on and so forth. And then hopefully we'll be able to recruit more and more units here. I mean, I think that's how it works. I could be wrong. Okay, so what did it do? <laughs> oh, really? Two relation and one renown. That's that's not very good. That's not very good. Okay, well, whatever the case, on several occasions throughout your life, you have seen the strange Latin letters. You quickly learn to read. Perhaps in time you will also learn to write. This will require you to stay a week at the monastery. A week? Wow. Okay, well, I, I, I know that it's going to take, a, a you know, a, quite a while to learn how to read, but seriously? A week? Okay, sure. Yep, we, oh, okay, yep. Uh, uh, oh, oh, thankfully. Oh, okay, there you go. Thankfully, what's happening now is the time is being sped up. I thought I would have to wait the standard amount of wait time that usually transpires whenever you wait for some time quote unquote so yeah thankfully they've thought of that and made a slight change to it so that's good as you can see we're getting huge amounts of training going on here as well by the way there's our iron works getting us 590 that's pretty decent and we're only losing 750 which is basically one little basket of wool at Dorstadt. so that's pretty amazing Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so, otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to make another donation. And we're going to ask if somebody wants to join us. Right, so widows and orphans. Yes, widows and orphans. Okay, well, we're going to continue leveling these up here. Wow. They are, I, I don't know what's going on here, but they are very expensive. I mean, you, you know, I've spoken about this before where most of the upgrades 
are extremely expensive for some reason. Oh, young warriors, hello there. Do you want some prisoners? You scum, pillage, and enslave people. You deserve death. No, we're not going to say that. I wish to collect on these things. 85, 85. Yeah, that, that's pretty good, isn't it? Seems pretty good to me. We're now above 15,000 at least. What I'd like to do is maybe buy another enterprise at London, perhaps. I think that could be another good one to go for. And hopefully that would give us a good amount of money as well. As you can see, I have two baskets of wool there. Which is not too bad. I am getting butter every couple of days from the cow that we have in our inventory. So that's that's pretty good, I suppose. And what do we have going on here? Who's that? Masterless fighters. I don't really need to worry about those guys too much. Wow, they really don't have that much, do they? Gonna take some, you know, some food here and there. Because we, you know, probably are gonna need that. Alright, so, yeah. Let's just, let's just continue recruiting, basically. I, I know this is not a particularly good idea to do, because eventually the wages are going to be so, so extravagant that it's going to start eating us out of house and home. But hopefully we won't have that problem, because at that point I will hopefully have another. Alright, so I've been wandering around the countryside just a little bit, and I have a couple of options as to who we are going to attack next. As you can see here, we have Masterless Men. 22 of them, and we have Masterless Fighters. Now, these guys do have some prisoners, and one of them in particular I'm quite interested in. As you can see, one of them has a Danish Elite Viking. One of them only, but that might be a little bit better to go for. But again, the renown value from that battle is not actually going to be that good, because there's only 12 of them in comparison to 22. But I guess we should probably do something along those lines, because we need really, really good units. And hopefully these are going to fit the bill. Or at least this one. Please don't attack them. Please don't join me either. Ugh. Oh. Uh, you are annoying. Yes. Okay, so yeah. Unfortunately, the young warriors decided that they wanted to join us. Which I'm not going to begrudge them too much. Because obviously they're just intending to help and, you know, purge the land of bandits wherever they may be. But I wanted to attack them myself, because that gives me the greatest chance of being able to get good amounts of renown rewards and all kinds of things. And, I, well, I, I guess I should just be really happy that I'm able to get the Danish Elite Viking as a rescued prisoner. But even that, I would have been able to do by myself, so it's not really necessary. Oh well, never mind. I guess I should just... Uh, just deal with it. Okay, so hopefully... <laughs> uh, should, I, I, I'm not even going to say hopefully we're going to do this because really it's it's just... It's very silly. We are most likely going to be absolutely fine. I'm going to try and not take any damage. Oh well, any more damage than that 5 damage because I really do want to... Oh, oh yeah, take that. There we go. Yeah, I really do want to make sure I don't take any more wounds. You know, I don't want any more actual scars going on there. So... Oh, that guy's just going to run away, so that's absolutely fine. But there you go. Oh, oh, we don't? We don't get the opportunity to take those Danish Elite Viking? Oh, yeah, we do. Never mind. Wrong tab. I was looking at the wrong wrong little menu there. Fantastic. All right, so, yeah, these are not really that good. Going to be selling those, of course. And now, maybe we can head back up over here. I was actually heading over to this village as well as to this monastery here, too. So at least now we can learn to, well, we can read books. So hopefully we'll be able to learn a bunch from those books as well. I think that could be pretty good. Obviously, I'm not entirely sure which books do what, but we'll find that out as time goes on. So nothing to worry about there. Let's buy that honey and sell a couple of things. There we are. That's fine. You can just take that. All right. So uh, just a small trade. Do you see that? Yeah, it's just a small trade. And we're going to go over to this monastery here. Maybe there'll be a bunch of units that we could fight. I was wanting to actually fight these master's men, but unfortunately they are currently being slaughtered by one of the Mia's vassals. Oh, they just left them alone? Okay, if you're going to be lazy, then I'll do it for you. Yes, let's do this. Can I... Oh no, we'll leave you in peace because I really don't want to fight with this guy. I really don't. I mean, it's just going to be one of those stomps, you know, and I don't really want to do a stomp. I mean, I would like to 
have a pretty big battle, but it seems like most of the bandits are very, very difficult. Now, if I were to increase the campaign AI, you know what would happen? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to take it back. So, in other words, it would stay on extreme or on hardcore or whatever the setting is, and then everything would explode, you know, so every single party on the map would have many more members, which would actually not be a bad thing if you're fielding an army that I have right, right here, you know, 95 units is pretty good. If there's an army of maybe 30 elites, then that might be pretty decent for us to fight against, but anything more than that, and I think that, I think elites would most likely win the day there. So that's something I'm a little bit worried about in general. Ah, more masterless men. Hello there. Could you stay where you are while I catch up to you? I don't know where you've gone. I mean, don't I have huge amounts of pathfinding right now? Yeah, I have, well, technically 10. So I should be able to catch up. All right. Ah, this might be a... Well, with 95, nothing's really going to be a big challenge. But, oh, Britain champions. Oh, yes. Let's do it. Let's try and tackle them, shall we? Let's try and tackle all of these. Yes, there we go. This is what we need. This is a big, big fight right here. 39. That's the biggest we've gotten so far, so pretty happy with that. Even if we do have 95 and are considerably outnumbering the opponent, we're going to get 8 renown for this, so I'm pretty happy with that. And even if we have a huge battle advantage... That's okay. That's okay. We don't always need to be the one that is on the, <laughs> uh, shall we say, under the boot of many of the vassals and lords with a battle advantage of, I don't know, minus 10 or something. Because that has happened. That has happened in the past. And yes, hopefully we will do a much better job this time. What is actually going on here? Why are my skirmishers being all weird? They're being all kind of weird, aren't they? Okay, let's get my skirmishers to come over here. Because they're kind of just going in the river, and I don't really want them to go over there. Thank you very much. So let's just tell our infantry and everything to come over this way. Okay, so are they just going to go... Uh, are they just going to stand there? It looks like they're just going to stand there. I was hopeful that I'd be able to pull them over to the river and the bridge, because that's a natural bottleneck, isn't it? The bridge is just absolutely fantastic. And anyone that goes into the river is going to be slowed so much that our skirmishers will be able to hit them with their wonderful, wonderful rocks. Because let's face it, their rocks are the most powerful thing ever that we've ever seen, isn't it? Yes. All right, well, it seems like I'm going to have to traverse the bridge. Don't really want to do it, but I guess we have to. I mean, at least we took a little bit of a rest, so our stamina could restore itself back to high. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see a stamina bar instead of a a word there. I'd like to see a stamina bar which tells me, hey, you, you've got 80% or 90% stamina instead of high, normal, and tired, you know, that sort of thing. I don't know whether that's even possible to implement, but I think it probably is. All right, so let's see. If we're able to do this, obviously I have a bunch of skirmishers out the front here, which I, I very much do not like. I don't like the skirmishers when they go in front. It's very, very ill-advised, especially considering we are against such powerful units. I mean, we are against pretty powerful units right here, so having all of our skirmishers fight in a very reckless manner is not going to work out too well at all. And hopefully I'll be able to... Oh my, wow. Okay, these guys die very fast, don't they? I was not anticipating them dying so quickly, but I suppose, well, that's to be expected. I don't really mind losing too many of our units either, by the way, because, well, they're all perfectly replaceable. I don't want to be too callous about it, but really, yes, most of them are perfectly replaceable, so nothing to worry about too much there. And, wow, it looks like a pretty easy victory. Thankfully, some of our units are using blunt weapons, which does then mean many more prisoners for us, and I like that. So let's see if I can... Yeah, come on, get him. Oh, no. Okay, let's see if I can get him with that. Oh, it's not working. It's not working. Oh, there we go. We hit him a little bit. Ah, oh, we missed. Ah, oh, we missed the last one. Okay, so who is going to get him? Are you going to get him? Some of you? No? Nope, no one's going to get him. All right, well, that's fine. Eight Renown is okay, and we have 17 prisoners to take, and that is 
fantastic. That's going to be a lot of money right there. So hopefully we'll maybe make it back up to about 15,000. Obviously, I've been spending a lot of money on, you know, pledging and donating to the monastery and all that sort of thing. So hopefully we will be in a much better position here. I'm pretty happy with my shield right now, so I don't really need to swap that out. And most of everything else is absolutely fine. I'm going to be using this sword because I think that having a bit of a larger reach could be quite useful. So just going to go for something like that. Okay. Otherwise, we're pretty well. We're pretty close to Dunwich still. Uh, maybe I could find some young warriors. Maybe I could find some young warriors to sell my prisoners to. I would prefer a ransom broker because usually they tend to give better prices. I don't know. It's it's kind of a bit weird to find out the exact prices of all these things when I'm consistently having different, you know, different prisoners. So, yeah. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, that's just some village farmers. All right, well, if, if I don't have a ransom broker here, then I guess I'm just going to have to find some young warriors at some point. And... No, I did... Oh, oh, yes, there is a ransom broker. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so let's sell all of them. 1,350. That's pretty nice. That is pretty nice. Do you think I can get this guy? I can for 6,000. Okay, let's do it. Why not? Let's do it. I, I can make a good amount of money from just getting wool, so I don't really have a problem with that. Even though I have 9,000 left. I, I guess that's okay. That is fine. All right. So let's just sell the rest of our stuff here. I think most of our forces actually have pretty decent gear now, so it's not really necessary for me to give them anything from this. I'm going to keep this helm, because I think that someone could use a helm, and maybe a sword as well. And there's 1,000 right on the nose. Very good. Okay, well, that will be it for this episode. Next time, I think I will have probably traded just a little bit, just to make sure that we're consistently keeping above about 15,000, maybe, and hopefully I'll have enough if it is lucrative enough, at least, for another business. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.